our speaker is Andrew Smeal, and he is the Chief Strategy Officer at Hindawi Limited, uh, an open access publisher of STM journals. In this role, he leads a variety of growth-oriented projects for the company. In his prior role as Chief Product Officer, he led development of the open source Phenom platform, a suite of free and open infrastructure for publishing open access journals. Prior to his work in academic publishing, he spent several years as a U.S.-China policy research researcher at the Center on U.S.-China Relations, where he produced multimedia pieces, including the China Boom Project, and managed research on Korean Peninsula security issues. He is going to talk about editor and peer reviewer assignments using Data Harmony. So, Andrew, um, we're seeing your... Um, presenter view you see which one do you see you see this thing with the slides at the bottom or the the big single slide yes we we see the slides at the bottom okay maybe that means i need to switch this or something like that like this and then that. do this does that make any difference i don't know why no. it's showing you oh, okay we can do it i guess we can just go like this if that's what powerpoint says that's what we will do um so yeah, hi, hi everyone. Um, thanks for your time today. Um, okay, we're not seeing your yeah. slides yet. Oh, oh, you're not? Okay. Then okay, gonna, there we I'm go, gonna, perfect. I'm, I'm gonna put them here and I'm not gonna present because if I present for some reason, it, it puts you into that weird, um, uh, hold on, I just want them to be full screen. Does that work? There we go. Um, I'm going to be presenting to you today about um, how we use Data Harmony to personalize editor recommendations. Um, so, uh, quickly about Hindawi. So, Hindawi uh, is, is an open access publisher. We publish uh, Gold OA journals across all areas of STEM. Uh, and since January 1st of this year, we, we've been part of John Wiley and Sons. Um, in addition to publishing open access journals, we also develop journal software. So, we, we have a platform called Phenom. It's an open source platform that uh, is an end to end, uh, end to end platform for running open access journals, so specifically open access journals, everything from submission all the way through to uh, publication and hosting. I'll talk a bit about that. Uh, we, we operate about 235 journals. Uh, of those, 205 are Hindawi journals and uh, about 30 are journals that we operate for various partners. So we also work with societies like the AAAS uh, and also other publishers like Sage and CUP to publish open access journals on their behalf. And you know, there you have a bit of a sense of our, of our volume. Um, so our taxonomy, uh, we, we began the project of developing a taxonomy with uh, Access Innovations back in 2018. We have uh, a broad uh, STEM taxonomy. There's our, our picture from the um, thesaurus master there. Uh, it's an open taxonomy actually, so, so we, we do make it available if anyone else out there needs needs a STEM taxonomy, um, it's there for you to use. And I believe uh, uh, Access Innovations can facilitate that. Um, we um, started this, uh, developing this taxonomy because we knew we had a problem. Um, every submission to one of our journals needs an academic editor. So uh, it comes in, uh, it, it goes to an editorial board. That editorial board might have a chief editor or a triage editor who's trying to assign these papers. Some of our journals are, are quite big. They, they handle thousands of submissions uh, per month and they'll need uh, you know, some kind of automated process. It's not even at a scale where, where humans can, can do it themselves. Um, you want the editors though to have the appropriate expertise to handle that journal article. Um, and we needed a way to uh, match the, the topic of a paper to the expertise of our editors. Um, especially because, you know, we were finding that even humans were struggling with this problem. So uh, what we do is for each editor on one of our journals, uh, we have about 13,500 editors that we work with. We fetch all of their abstracts from the web of science. Uh, we concatenate these into a big text file and we run that text file through data harmony to extract terms according to our rule base. So each editor then gets a, a fingerprint, which is the terms and the frequency of those terms that occur in their uh, published abstracts. 
Um, and then for each uh, submission that comes in, we do essentially the same thing. So we, we take the text of the submission and we run it. Uh, we use the data harmony API to uh, get the suggested terms for that, uh, for that submission. Uh, and we are, we're left with something that looks like what you see there on the right. So this is a very simple looking um, fingerprint for a submission. Uh, and you can see from that, that it, it starts to show you a bit about the, the topic that the paper is covering, but also something about maybe the areas of that topic that the paper is more focused on. And for the editors, the fingerprint looks very similar. Um, essentially it's uh, once you have enough published material, you start to get a signal about which subspecialties that, that editor is focused on. So once we have these two, uh, these two fingerprints, we uh, have an, a, a, an algorithm um, called uh, cosine similarity that we run. It's, uh, I, I won't claim to be a, a text and data mining expert. There's people probably in this, in this conference that know far more about this than I do. But we, we use this cosine similarity score to compare the, uh, the, the similarity between the editor's fingerprint uh, each of the editor fingerprints on the journal and the submission fingerprint. So this is something that runs inside of our product and uh, compares those two things. And it adds a, a small term, um, which is probably too small for you guys to see clearly, but uh, it adds a small term uh, that looks at the, the depth of the term within the taxonomy as well. So we're not only comparing the uh, the frequency of the term, but we're also weighting terms that occur deeper in the taxonomy more than terms that occur shallower, uh, shallower, more shallow in the taxonomy. So by that, I mean, if something is a top level term, a first level term, uh, it's gonna have a weight of zero. Uh, whereas if it's, a, if it's five levels deep in the taxonomy, we'd consider that a more specific term and therefore it, it gets, it gets uh, the, the value from that term gets multiplied by five. Um, so this generates a matching score for each editor and uh, the paper in question, uh, and we rank those. And uh, we then rule out, we, we run some rules to exclude people that are uh, have a conflict of interest, say if they, they work at the same institution as the authors, or uh, if they're busy because they're already handling too many papers. And that gives us a list of, of uh, a ranked list of editors that are available to handle this paper. Um, and uh, quickly, quick digression, just to show you a bit how this, where this lives within Phenom. So this uh, technical diagram is a picture of, of, you know, a logical view of the Phenom system. So Phenom involves a bunch of independent um, uh, services. Uh, so we have a review service. That's where we're managing peer review. It's also currently where, where submissions come in. We have a service called screening, and that's where we, um, um, actually do a lot of things that, that Margie was alluding to this morning. We check for um, plagiarism. We check if the paper might be machine generated. We look for conflicts of interest. We, we do various checks to make sure that the, uh, the integrity, uh, that, that the paper um, doesn't violate any of our research, research integrity guidelines and that it's ready to go into peer review. Um, uh, Phenom also has modules for production. So uh, typesetting articles, syndication, uh, that's delivering content to abstracting and indexing databases, uh, hosting content, uh, reporting, business intelligence, data visualization, and um, also invoicing processing uh, article, uh, uh, handling payment for article processing charges. Uh, but that piece there, screening, you'll see I, I've just shown there that uh, that's where the, the little cloud bubble of data harmony lives. And that's where we're processing these terms in that screening module. Um, and so once we have uh, the terms, this is how we put it to use. Um, we can automatically assign papers to editors in some of the bigger journals. You might say, yeah, uh, just use the list, use the ranked list and take the top one. If they say no, go to the next one. If they say no, go to the next one. Uh, we also uh, can use it to generate suggestions instead. So show the list to a triage editor or a chief editor and let them pick because you know the, they, they'll often have a more subtle understanding of the different expertise of the, of the users, but it still helps them to know uh, to see the list of keywords, to see the score, to, to be able to make an informed choice. Um, and there on the right, you see a, a little screenshot from within Phenom of the way that the, um, the keyword list might be presented to the editor when they're, when they're, making, a, when they're making their choice. Um, and there's tons of 
future applications for this. So finding reviewers is one that, that Heather mentioned. Um, we also, uh, you know, can use it to identify related content. Lots of lots of publishers do that. You know, they they use their taxonomy to generate collections or to show lists of, of suggested articles. We also um, uh, have plans down the road to use it for scope checking. So to make sure that an article fits within the aims and scope of a journal, maybe to dynamically understand the aims and scope of a journal, to understand if if a journal um, if certain topic areas are are of more emerging interest within a journal. Um, we uh, use it, uh, there's all kinds of applications in search, uh, you know, creating creating filters on our content on the display side, uh, autocomplete, things like that. Uh, and then, you know, tracking research trends, understanding um, uh, maybe areas that we want to invest in, in terms of launching journals or, uh, or marketing to researchers in certain areas. So that's a quick, you know, very fast tour through our implementation of, of uh, Data Harmony. And I'm happy to um, discuss, answer questions. Um, yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Um, we do have a question. Um, how many level levels does Hindawi's taxonomy have? And how many does it cover? So I'll jump back to, to this slide. Uh, in terms of levels, I can't give you the exact answer off the top of my head. Uh, possibly uh, one of my colleagues who's here in the meeting might know, but I believe it's seven or eight. So it goes fairly deep, but that's not uniform you know, across every uh, topical area. So, so in some areas we're going quite deep, uh, uh, in other areas uh, we're, we're more shallow. Um, this is actually the picture of our, of our taxonomy here. So, um, you can see that we're divided into a few big top level areas. Um, we have some areas that are that are not exactly um, you know related to a STEM field like like research methods. And uh, Julian confirms uh, that it is seven. So my guess was right. Uh, research methods might be useful because we want to know if an editor has an expertise on you know I think like MRIs were showing up on on uh, the fingerprint that I was showing. That might be that might be sort of useful because we want someone who's Use that um, that particular uh, method before um, people and places. Similar thing. It might be about analyzing whether um, you know some of our content might be based on a certain geographic, might cover a certain geographic area, and that expertise might be relevant. Um, so it's not just STEM fields, but then within uh, these big buckets, you also uh, we also cover you know pretty much all of STEM. I mean, we we um, don't do a ton in the social sciences at Hindawi. But we uh, def definitely in, in medicine, physical sciences, life sciences, um, we have very broad coverage. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. Have you been able to evaluate the matching algorithm and what have the early results been? So, uh, yes, uh, we have early results validating the matching algorithm. And what, what I could tell you is that it's it's definitely performing better than what we had before. And what we had before was a was round robin assignment. Essentially, it was only looking at uh, a workload at, and and uh, at conflict of interest. So we were basically saying, if you're an editor of this journal, you know, either you can handle any submission to the journal, uh, you know, at least handle the peer review. So find the right experts in the peer review process, um, or the triage editor, the editor kind of making the human decision of who to assign would know enough about their editorial boards to, to make the assignment. And we found that, um, you know, in fact, that wasn't the case that we were seeing backlogs develop because there were too many um, uh, invitations being refused because people were saying, no, I actually don't know anything about this topic. I can't handle this paper. And so uh, since we've implemented this, which has been in the last, you know, uh, month or so, or a bit longer than that, but we're rolling it out in stages. Um, we've seen the backlog start to come down. We've seen um, we've seen the editor accept rate, so the rate that editors are accepting invitations go up. Um, and we've seen the time that it takes to assign the editor to a paper come down. So I think that was stuck at around two weeks for a while, and we're starting to see that come down to you know, 10, 11 days or so. Um, and, but we do also see areas that it, it could still be improved. 
it's definitely not, um, you know, th this cosine similarity algorithm that, that we're using, and I, I don't claim to understand it, it's definitely um, subject to uh, biases aren't the right word, but you know, certain signals can throw it off. Very, you know, very high frequency of certain keywords uh, can throw it off. Um, the level weighting can throw it off because our taxonomy doesn't have uniform levels um, throughout every subject area. Um, uh, so we're looking at that. And, and so some of my colleagues, if you're interested, you could talk to um, to Julian uh, Netrefor, who's who's at the conference, who's who's working on that specifically as one of our product managers.